Welcome fabulous fans and superstars. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out this video. My name is Bear River and I'll be talking to you about the movement of Mars into the sign of Gemini. But before I start, I want to say an enormous thank you to Nadia for inviting me to create this content for your channel and giving me such a wonderful opportunity. I am deeply, deeply grateful to you and I'm really grateful and excited to be part of the community that all of you fans and superstars are a part of. So like I said, my name is Bear River. I'm the intersectional astrologer and Reiki master of Psyche and Soul Astrology. Now, my mission is to help you remain grounded and empowered while you accelerate your growth. And to do that, every week I create at least one and usually two videos over on my channel. And you'll find information for that down in the description box. Assessing the planetary transits and focusing on leaving you with a tangible takeaway. Either a question of the day or a challenge of the day to help you really sink your teeth into what's going on practice practically and to harness the power of astrology in your life on a day-to-day -day basis. So for the Mars ingress into Gemini, I will have a challenge of the day for you if you choose to accept it at the end of the video. So you're definitely going to want to stick around and check that out. Now I'm going to pop up the chart over here. I'll show you a few things that we'll be looking at and analyzing to really flesh out what this movement of Mars into Gemini holds in store for all of us and how we can really work with that energy. So the first thing I want to draw your attention to is that on the rising sign we have well, on the ascendant we have the sign of Scorpio which means that if we use a classical ruler schema Mars is actually ruling this chart which kind of gives it extra power so I think for all of us will experience that moving into this Mars Gemini period there is a really big and sudden change and shift in the energy whereas if you look backwards over the course of the month of March Mars was in Taurus and things are a little slower we're all feeling a little bit more tired, a little bit more relaxed maybe, and just more focused on being out in nature, getting our feet in the sand or in the dirt or in the grass and really just kind of slowly and ploddingly going about our day-to-day -day lives. And when Mars moves into Gemini on March the 30th, so just a couple of days from now, there's gonna be kind of a shift instead of it being about slow and plotting it's about quick it's about gathering information talking to different people i think we'll all experience a much needed sigh of relief as we feel that spring-like vibe now because mars will be in the sign of gemini mars is going to be taking orders from mercury and so i'll talk a little bit in this video about what's been going on with Mercury over the course of the month of March. I know we all know that it was retrograde. And what will be happening with Mercury as we move into April because by the end of April when, when Mercury finally does clear its shadow zone, we're going to have Mars and Mercury in what astrologers call mutual reception. This means that Mars will be taking orders from Mercury while Mercury is taking orders from Mars. And this is really going to have a lot to do with my expectation that we'll see a big shift in how social we're feeling, how quickly we want to move things ahead, and the way in which we go about exercising that energy in particular in our relationships, one-on-one -on -one relationships especially. So I'll drop the chart back down, just show you my face, and I'll talk to you a little bit about what to expect, especially this week as we end the month of March, go into the first week of April, but also how that's going to play out into well over the course of Mercury leaving its shadow territory and then that upcoming mutual reception that will start on April the 18th so I'll do my best to put some sort of description down here if there's a date or a particular placement that I'm emphasizing I'll pop up the chart when we need to and then after I kind of break down what's going on with the planets I will give you that tangible takeaway so the first thing that I really want to look at 
with any chart is where is that ruling planet, right? If Mars is the planet that rules that very first moment of that changeover in sign, we're gonna wanna look at Mars. And where do we see Mars in this chart? We see Mars in the sign of Gemini, which is already about, you know, gathering information. It's already a very social planet. It's about talking, right? It's about our communication with other people, especially our friends, could be siblings. And Mars is in the seventh house of this chart, which really highlights the importance and the role that our partners are going to play. So this could be business partners or marriage partners or anybody that we have an intimate one-on-one -on -one relationship with. And so I think the biggest thing that we can do, my big suggestion, I'll put at the beginning, my suggestion is that for all of us that whatever little inklings came up during this Mercury retrograde process, that you talk with your partners about it. You know, talk with, if you're married or romantically partnered, if you're happily single and you got a best friend that's just a really big part of your life, talk with those folks about the new bits of information that came up, about the questions that you still have, because I think they will hold potentially, you know, missing bits of information or insights into how you can incorporate all of the information that came up over the course of the month of March. Now, just to contrast the Mars in Gemini vibe that we'll have as we end the month of March and go into the month of April, I wanna bring your attention to what we were experiencing earlier in the month of March as Mars was in the sign of Taurus. Now, Mars in Taurus is a lot slower. It's calm, it's cool. Think of a bull that's just being left to mind its own business, right? Because Taurus is the sign of the bull. Mars in Taurus is just chilling. Only real mission is to just eat grass, hang out in the field, chill with the cows. Pretty mellow, all in all. And I think for a lot of us, this really worked to our advantage as we're going through this Mercury retrograde time, or as we were going through that Mercury retrograde time where our reassessment, our new decisions, our retracing of our steps are all really highly emphasized. You know, we're in a place where we're able to be more receptive, a little bit slower to process and assimilate all of those new vibes, all of that dream time energy. Just let this boat go by here. As we went through this Mercury retrograde time, right? Mercury retrograde is real simple from our perspective, from your perspective, right? Mercury's going forward. And from 16 to 29 degrees of Pisces, this is that territory that we call the shadow territory where Mercury goes forwards, backwards, and then forwards again. And I'm drawing your attention to this because the very day that Mars moves into Gemini, it enters the rulership of Mercury. And Mercury is at 16 degrees of Pisces, the degree where it stops to move forwards again. And so I think Mars in, and Mars in Gemini with the seventh house vibe related to partnership, related to business partners potentially, but related to this one-on-one -on -one dynamic that's really intimate and has a profound effect on our lives is the vehicle for moving forward with all of that Mercury retrograde information that came through. Now, Mercury will be moving direct, but it's still really slow. And so there's a little bit of like, okay, the, the information came in. I figured out where I needed to pause and revise or revisit or retrace my steps, right? All these re words come with the retrograde. And it's a time where, so with Mars moving into Gemini, Mars is going to be under the rulership of Mercury. And being under the rulership of Mercury, while Mercury is still really slow, just finally facing moving through that shadow zone, I think Mars is really going to hold the key to actually assimilating all of that information and doing something with it. So I think Mars will be giving us the dynamism, the motivation, right? That kind of catalyzing energy, because that's the function of Mars, right? To go after the things that we want, to really work through all of this new information. Now, we can look at one other thing here. I wanna keep it really simple and in nice and tight so that we can focus on that tangible takeaway, that challenge of the day at the end of this video. 
The other thing that I want us to consider is that as we, as Mercury finally clears its shadow territory, that'll happen when it touches into Aries on April the 18th, could be the 19th, depending on where you are in the world, but right around the middle of the month, Mercury will move into Aries and start taking orders from Mars, who will be in Gemini, taking orders from Mercury. And this is what astrologers call a mutual reception, when two planets are working together and taking orders from one another. It's kind of like this feedback loop where we'll find ourselves all really tightly focused in on doing something with the information. And that doing something with the information is really going to be connected to our intimate partnerships, whether those are business partners or romantic partners. That I think is really gonna be the key. So talking to the folks who are closest to you, could even be a best friend, right? But someone who's really, really close and deeply connected to your life in a profound way, I believe is gonna give us the missing bits of information that we need, right? If the retrograde time period is where we retrace our steps to figure out what did I forget? What did I not notice before? Then this last bit of direct that Mars is doing, which we'll be looking ahead to, right, from March 30th when Mercury, or when Mars moves into Gemini and in through the early weeks of April, we'll be watching Mercury move through its shadow zone. And Mars is going to be kind of giving us the energy that we need to get those last little bits of information, those last few details to really be able to work through whatever came up for us during that Mercury retrograde process. Now, one thing that you know, I've, I like to focus on a lot because I am an intersectional astrologer. I'm always looking at how power and privilege play out in a political context, even in our own personal charts, is that while we can look at Mars, and most astrologers will, myself included, look to Mars as a planet that has to do with how we go out and get the things that we want. I also see Mars as having a lot to do with how we have access, right? If Mars is about power, right, the power to go initiate the process of getting what we want, the power to defend our boundaries, the power to actually, you know, physically get something done. You know, if we want to build a house, you need muscle power to put the walls up. I also see Mars as relating to power in the sense of our access to institutions, to to the resources that we need to actually enact out our wishes and desires. So. I really recommend here that you just consider, you know, what do, what do I need to be able to access? What information do I need to get to, whether we're talking about work, if business stuff came up for you with that Mercury retrograde, if we're talking about relationships, you know, who are the people who are going to be able to help me open doors for myself or help open doors for me so that I can get to those places that I want to be. And I really think that for all of us, that you know, none of us can do it alone. We always need a friend or a partner or an ally you know, or a business partner to help us achieve those goals and dreams. The last thing I'll mention about the astrology here is just kind of an interesting little side note, but you can kind of work with it if you, if you want to dig deeper into this ingress chart. Where Mercury will be ruling Mars because Mars is in the sign of Gemini, Mercury will also be ruling the midheaven, the point in the chart that represents high noon, the most visible thing, and also our ambitions for success and our careers. And so because of that, and especially because we got that seventh house connection, I think it's really important to consider, you know, whether you work for someone else, whether you are an entrepreneur, whether you are an aspiring small business owner and you're just getting started, you know, who are those people who are really helping you materialize your ambitions and your dreams in the outer world? And that will bring us to the challenge of the day. A way that you can really take all of these abstract thoughts and make them personal, make them real, and actually work with them immediately as soon as this video is over. And so your challenge of the day is to talk to your partners, talk to your partner, 
business, romantic, best friend, housemate, talk to them about the things that you have recently learned. Whether you learned them independently, something that you learned together, or if you still feel that you need more information, then go learn something new with your partner. That is, I think, the easiest and most direct way that we can really tap into this energy. And this is a challenge that you can recreate every day over the month of April if you want to. Do it for a whole week. Bring it back right around April 18th and see how that learning process changes as Mercury 2 moves sign and that mutual reception kicks up. So. Once again, thank you so very much for your time, for watching this video, and huge, huge, deep bow to Nadia. Thank you again for this wonderful opportunity. Again, my name is Bear River. I am the Intersectional Astrologer and Reiki Master of Psyche and Soul Astrology. It is my pleasure to have had the chance to talk to all of you fabulous fans and superstars today, to find links for my channel, for social media, if you wanna let me know how this challenge goes for you, just use the hashtag armchair astrology i would love to hear what you think of this video and how you are using this information in your day-to-day -day life until we meet again thank you many blessings to you and may your learning be fruitful and carry you forward